Rise and shine. You're watching WCTV Eyewitness News. The Good Morning Show starts now. Coming up at 6, college football dynasty. Georgia, back-to-back -back champions. Um, they, they, they stomped on the hard yeah. frog in Texas. Ugh. Our sports director, Ryan Kelly, has got a recap in just a few minutes. Mm -hmm. hey. All right, and this almost doesn't seem fair, you know, after such a victory, you know, now Georgia also has to talk about something sad. Gas is about to get a lot more expensive in the Peach State. So I hope you filled up yesterday. Coming up, what's causing prices to spike overnight? Oh, I, man. I, I inadvertently filled up over the week. I play a lot of golf in Georgia. Oh, okay. So, so you were able that's, to. That's where I've been getting gas for the last mm -hmm. nine months or so. Yeah, I, I need gas. Yeah. I should have <laughs> went over the line to get some. But, man, that game yesterday, I am so disappointed that I rearranged my sleeping habit. I didn't go jogging because oh. I was thinking, all right, as soon as I get okay. off from work, I'm going to go to sleep, sleep, and then I'll get up right before the game, watch the game, mm -hmm. stay up with everybody for the excitement. I missed my jogging. And now, you and gotta, now you gotta run twice as much today. Right. For nothing, because that game was a blowout. Yeah, <laughs> oh was my a... gosh. Hey. I mean, congratulations, congratulations to Georgia, them, right? but I just didn't they think showed. that they, they it, you were, know, the team. I thought it was at least going to be a game, though. It was no competition. Uh, there you have it, ladies. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's get some weather forecast and talk. Uh, I think what we're going to have around here is going to be some cooler temperatures this morning, just like we had sort of kind of yesterday. We're going to have even cooler tomorrow morning, maybe in some spots. So we're keeping the numbers down, and uh, when we head to the upcoming weekend. The numbers are going to drop even more. So we've got some cool coming, some January kind of temperatures for sure. It's 40 right now in Tallahassee. It's 40 right now in Valdosta. Perry's down to 37 this morning. Now the story for us today is really going to be about some of these clouds moving away and sunshine and trying to get up over 70. I don't see a lot of reductions in visibility, not enough moisture around just yet. We do have a couple of clouds, but those will scoot away too. And I think for most of us, it's going to be a lot of sunshine today, just like it was yesterday. And those top temperatures can and should get near 70. Tonight into tomorrow, another cold one. And then we talk about some shower chances coming by Thursday, especially later in the day Thursday before the next wave of cold gets here for the weekend. I think the weekend temperatures are going to stay down both mornings and afternoons. Lots to break down with that forecast. I'll have it in just a couple of minutes. We begin in Tallahassee, where the Veterans Day Parade has been saved. This news coming after a meeting last night. The city had charged the nonprofit that organizes the parade several thousand dollars, sparking outrage among its members. Our Savannah Kelly has more. This meeting was heated, a lot of emotion and a lot at stake here. The president of Vet Events Tally, Joe West, said if he couldn't get enough people to volunteer to fill vacant positions and to help out with the Veterans Day Parade, then the entire organization would disband. I just love what they do. Patty Wilson, one of several vets who stepped in to help to prevent the nonprofit Vet Events Tally from dissolving after recent controversy. I was upset, A, that there's not enough community members to participate to keep the parade alive, but that the city would tax. That tax she's referring to is a more than $3,200 charge imposed by the city this year. The city calling it a policy, one that prompted President Joe West to consider disbanding the organization altogether. We're too old to keep doing this. West says it's the first time in 13 years the city charged a fee for helping with the parade. It's also the first First year, the city offered a $5,000 grant to help cover some of the costs. But with the new fee tacked on, 65% of the grant is going back to the city. It's never been about the money, it's about the lack of respect. At Monday night's meeting, the general consensus among these vets is to keep going, despite frustration with the city. And now, with enough volunteers to make it happen, Joe West will be resigning as president, making way for current VP John Pantoja to assume the role. There are a lot of people who have put their heart and soul into this and, you know, just to poof, disappear one day, you know, that's, that's not acceptable. Planning for next year's parade is expected to begin next month. 
Vet Events Tally isn't the only group that was billed by the city this year. It's one of a dozen organizations that were charged a portion of what it cost the city to help them put on special events. You can find a full list of those organizations as well as comments from city commissioners on our website, WCTV.TV. Reporting in Tallahassee, Savannah Kelly, WCTV Eyewitness News. And the Tallahassee Police Department is trying to bring down the number of traffic crashes involving pedestrians and cyclists. They're calling this campaign the High Visibility Enforcement Plan. Officers will be on the lookout for drivers or pedestrians breaking laws and will give warnings and educational material to reduce dangerous interactions. Now this is happening at five locations throughout the city that these incidents happen most often. We're looking hopefully to make that area safer, um, to minimize the, the interactions between vehicles and pedestrians or vehicles and bicyclists um, and, and hopefully reduce our overall you know, fatal crashes in those areas. Now this campaign runs until May for a complete list of hours and locations for the enforcement zones. Head to WCTV.TV now or open your WCTV news app on your phone and or tablet. Let's stay in North Florida. 211 Big Bend is working to strengthen its resources to better serve the community. The goal is to become a one-stop shop for coordinating care, including mental health resources and assistance with food insecurity. CEO Tori Greer announcing they're working more closely with other community nonprofits to streamline their process. People who may be leaving the emergency room or maybe um, you know, being discharged after having having a baby or something, um, oftentimes they're um, maybe given information about resources that are available, but we're actually trying to work to strengthen that so that we can actually follow up with people and make sure that they're getting connected to housing if they're housing insecure or uh, food if they're food insecure. 211 Big Bend is completely free for those in need, and they're looking currently for volunteers. No background in social work is needed, just a willingness to listen and learn to the necessary skills. 607. It's the start of something new under the Gold Dome. Georgia lawmakers returning to the state capitol for a new legislative session. Lawmakers confirming newly elected Lieutenant Governor Burt Jones and new House Speaker John Burns. Burns filling the position of late Speaker David Ralston. He took a moment to honor him yesterday. David Ralston has left a hole in the heart of this house. I was honored to call him my speaker, but I considered it an even greater honor to have called him my friend. This year, the legislature is welcoming 43 new members in the House and 10 new members in the Senate. Not everyone was in attendance yesterday at the Capitol. State Representative Houston Gaines had his wearing in under the roof at SoFi Stadium, along with Governor Brian Kemp, the First Lady, and State Supreme Court Justice John Ellington. This is Gaines's third term in the House. Coming up at 630, a more in-depth look at the makeup of those new members and what to expect from the session. Time now for First Alert Weather with meteorologist Rob Nucatola. So we start on the day planner. Going to have some clouds in a few spots this morning, but they'll be clearing out. And I do expect to find plenty of sunshine by this afternoon. Top temperatures, they're going to try to get near 70. A lot of us are starting near 40 and a pretty seasonable setup for middle of January. Here are some of those clouds I'm talking about on the satellite radar composite. They'll scoot out east, and as they continue to move away, I do expect to see more sun than clouds throughout the day. We've got some spots like Perry, like Live Oak, it's 37. The coolest spot is Blakely, it's only 34. But look at all the 40s, Bainbridge and Camilla and Tallahassee and Valdosta, Homerville, Cross City, all checking in right at 40 degrees. Futurecast clears things out for today, for tonight, and for most of tomorrow. But we will start to bring back those clouds a little bit late in the day, Wednesday, and they'll really thicken up during the day Thursday as we bring in plenty of moisture to set things up for that next chance to get some showers and storms. Maybe later in the day Thursday into Thursday night and even early Friday, we'll be able to fine tune that window a little bit more 
over the next 24 to 48 hours. But I think our next best chance to get wet's coming late in the day on Thursday. I see cooler air on the way for Friday and the weekend. It is definitely going to feel more January ish when we get there. But for today, for tomorrow, outside of these chilly starts, there should be some pretty nice finishes, decent sunshine, and highs up over 70.